Welcome back to Season 2 of the Pokemon Journeys Rewrite. Last time, Ash beat Clara during his climb to the top of the Isle of Armor's Tower, finishing their rivalry. Today, we focus on Go's journey in the Crown Tundra. What sort of legendary mysteries await? And how is everyone after the Project Legend ship was attacked by mysterious bird Pokemon? Well, find out right now! That's how we come this The team prepares for an emergency landing and crashes into the snow. Luckily, everyone is okay, but there's no trace of those bird Pokemon. Nobody has any clue who those Pokemon were, but it makes no sense for them to just attack them out of the blue. Puny says the best course of action is to make their way to Freezington, and so they trek through the snow and eventually arrive. They meet with the mayor of the town, who invites them into his home. He reveals those birds are actually Galarian forms of Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos and that for the past decade, they've been going on a rampage, and that the only one who was able to govern the birds was someone known as the King of Bountiful Harvests, who has been missing since they started their assault. Captain, what should we do? Well, this sounds like an adventure to me. Gary, Quillan, and Danica will go and monitor the birds' activity. Only engage in battle if necessary. Go, you're with me. We're gonna look into this King of Bountiful Harvest. The group splits up, now pursuing their respective missions. Go and Peony investigate this King of Bountiful Harvest all around town, asking townspeople and finding any sort of artwork or text relating to him. Apparently, the king ruled over an ancient kingdom, which once resided here in the Crown Tundra, and held the power to transform the snow-covered landscape into a paradise, allowing crops to grow any time of the year. Eventually, the two investigate the statue of the king in the middle of the town. The thing is, its head is missing, and Peony remembers something that matches it being in the mayor's home. So they head back to the mayor and get the statue's head. They put it back on the statue, and a giant burst of light occurs. Once it subsided, it's revealed that the statue has become a Pokemon. All of a sudden, an aura surrounds Peony, and he turns around to face Go. Human, I must thank you for returning me to my original form. Uh, Captain? What are you talking about? Go looks over to the Pokemon, who gives him a nod. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why in the world did you take control of the Captain's body? It was the most efficient way to converse with you. I hate to ask for more, but I am in desperate need of your help. Calyrex tells Go that he had lost all of his powers ten years ago after stopping a famine that threatened the people of Freezington, and so went to slumber to stay alive. He says that the bird's rampage is a result of his failure to maintain order, and that only once his power is restored will they calm. Peony's body is returned to him, and both him and Go agree to reawaken Calyrex's lost power. Meanwhile, Gary, Quillen, and Danica continue to monitor the legendary birds, who have reconvened at a giant tree. So far, they're out of sight, and use this time to survey and collect data on the regional variants. Back in Freezington, Calyrex repossesses Peony, telling Go that in order to restore his power, he needs to find his trusty steed, which he lost ten years ago. They need to find some sort of food that will attract it, the Ice Root Carrot. The three make their way to a nearby garden, which has lost all of its vitality due to Calyrex's slumber. Even so, they can't give up. Calyrex attempts to use its abilities, but it can't. All of a sudden, Go comes over to the Fallen King. Calyrex, you can do this! You're the King of Bountiful Harvest for a reason. You brought life to areas much bigger than a single garden. You can do this. What's holding you back isn't your own powers. 
It's your incompetence that's holding you back. You're feeling like you're not good enough. You're reaping in your own failures. You and I can relate, because I too know that feeling all too well. But you also have to push past that feeling, Calyrex. Peony also cheers on the Pokemon, and it's able to muster enough strength to grow the Ice Cream Carrot. The group returns to Freezington to reconvene, and it's at that moment a loud noise is heard. It's a horse, seemingly made out of pure ice. It's the steed, no doubt about it. Go and Peony tell Calyrex to leave this to them, and so send out Cinderace and Kabaraja. The two Pokemon are strong, but up against a legendary like this, it isn't easy to stay on equal footing. However, eventually the two land a critical hit on the Pokemon, forcing it to run away. They chase after it, but Calyrex stops them, picking up a tuft of the Pokemon's mane. Peony is possessed once again, as Calyrex informs Go that completely taming Glastrier would be impossible at this point, and that all they need right now is the tuft of its white mane, for they need to forge the reins of unity before Calyrex's true power can return. Meanwhile, back at the tree, the three continue to monitor the bird's activity, and are eventually spotted. The three come face to face with the legendary Pokemon, and so send out their partners Blastoise, Scizor, and Mawile. Gary smirks at the birds, his face brimming with confidence. If you think we're gonna let a bunch of chickens stand in our way, then you're mistaken. Back at the mayor's house, Calyrex tells Go that they have all the ingredients they need to craft the Reigns of Unity, what he needs to tame his steed. He tells them due to overusing his powers a decade ago, the Reigns broke, and now must be restored. Luckily, he already has the other item to craft the Reigns of Unity, the Radiant Pebble. Peony gains control of his body once again. We need to forge something? Then leave it to me! I'm a master of steel! The captain of Project Legend showcases his expertise in crafting as he perfectly recreates the Reigns of Unity, and now the trio have everything they need to restore Calyrex's lost power. All that's left is to find Glastrier's location. That's not an issue though, as Calyrex already knows exactly where he is. The Crown Shrine. The battle against the Galarian birds continues. Things aren't looking good. Despite the combined efforts of Blastoise, Scizor, and Mawile, the members of Project Legend can't seem to gain the upper hand. The birds are formidable, and their power far exceeds that of a normal Pokemon. Quillen and Gary then decide they'll take on the offensive and defensive, while Danica focuses more on support, hoping that it gives them the edge they need. Meanwhile, Peony, Calyrex, and Go make their way to the Crown Shrine. On the way there, Calyrex possesses Peony once again, and turns to Go. Go. If it isn't too much to ask, I would like your aid for the upcoming battle. Wait a second, what do you mean by that, Calyrex? I'm already helping you out. That is not what I mean. I wish for you to be my trainer in this fight. Let us work together to seize my steed. Me? Be your trainer in this fight? Calyrex, I, I don't know what to say. Please go. You are my hope. In that case, if I'm your only hope, then how can I possibly say no? Let's fight together, Calyrex! Calyrex nods as he releases Peony once again. They continue to trek up the tallest point in the Crown Tundra, and eventually reach the Crown Shrine. According to Calyrex, this used to be his palace over 1,000 years ago. But alas, it has fallen into a state of decay over the millennia. But just as Calyrex predicted, Glastrier stands there, and Go and Calyrex ready themselves. The two stand together as trainer and Pokemon. Glastrier roars, showcasing its full might as the battle begins. Without its steed, Calyrex is weak, but it maintains a calm demeanor during the fight. Unfortunately, Glastrier isn't an easy opponent to best, and Calyrex starts to falter. Meanwhile, it seems the strategy the other Project Legend members came up with seemed to be completely ineffective, as the Galarian birds still maintain dominance over their battle. Quillen steps forward. Gary? Donica, we can't afford to waste any more time. Let's go all out. You got it, boss. The three trainers unveil their true power as they each pull out a keystone and megastone. Blastoise, Scizor, and Mawile are enveloped in a bright light and mega evolve. Using their enhanced powers, they are able to stay on equal footing with the birds, actually landing in some decent hits. Gary thinks to himself that Go and Peony better be quick, because he doesn't know how long they can last. 
We return to the Crown Shrine, where Calyrex and Glastier continue to duke it out. Calyrex continues to give it his all, but still continues to falter. That is, until Go steps in. Calyrex, you got this! You still have some fight in you! I believe in you! Show your steed who the true king is! Hearing Go's words of determination, Calyrex gains newfound motivation, and goes in for an all-out offensive against Glastier. The Pokemon releases a barrage of attacks, not allowing Glastier to gain the upper hand. Go realizes that this is the perfect moment to use the Reins of Unity. Peony, do it now! On it! Peony tosses the Reins of Unity over to Calyrex, who catches them and activates their power. Glastrier resists, releasing a barrage of ice all around the Crown Shrine. But Calyrex stays determined. It needs to regain its power, for its people, the Pokemon that have gone astray without its guidance, its kingdom, and most importantly to showcase how he's grown. Calyrex wants to be a king ruling with a sense of equality between him and his people, to show the world that things can be peaceful. That is his dream. Calyrex pushes forward, completing the process and regaining its steed and true power. Go and Peony cheer, happy to see the plan actually worked. But there's no time to talk about this. Things aren't over yet. The battle between the Mega Evolved Pokemon and the Galarian Birds continues, and just like last time, things have taken a turn for the worse. Mega Evolution only gave them a temporary boost, as the legendary Pokemon continue to overwhelm the members of Project Legend. The birds charge up one final blow. But then all of a sudden, Calyrex appears alongside Go and Peony. The birds are shocked, but just like last year, are resistant towards the return of the king. Calyrex turns to Go, prompting him to once again fight by his side, and so Go sends out Cinderace to engage in battle with the legendary birds. Unlike last time, this fight isn't even fair, as Calyrex's true power completely illuminates the Crown Tundra. Cinderace is putting in some good work too, but it's undeniably a support Pokemon in all of this. Eventually, the birds become tired, and so Go and Calyrex end things. Cinderace uses a Pyro Ball, combining with Calyrex's Glacial Lance, and the attack hits, defeating the legendary birds. The three then finally seize their rampage, bowing before the king. Project Legend is fully reunited as a new era for the Crown Tundra is here. It's been a couple of days and Calyrex's return has already made a great difference within the Crown Tundra. All the Pokemon are now working in unison, and the plants have started to grow once again. As our Project Legend, they finally get to survey the area, learning all they can about the myths and legends of the ancient place. But the time comes for them to bid farewell to the snowy landscape, and so say farewell to Calyrex and the members of Freezington. Calyrex comes over to Go, bowing his head, thanking Go for everything he has done for his kingdom and people. Go is honestly kind of saddened by the thought of leaving Calyrex behind, but knows they both have to follow their own respective paths. The airship leaves as Project Legend returns to mainland Galar.